this is Swing Arm City or Caneville or the coolest motorcycle place on earth. We may have jumped the green jeep out there a couple times. <laughs> we are in Canesville, Utah. We're heading up onto Cathedral Mountain, which is over there where it's raining. We're going to get a giant earth roamer camper. They're giant. Uh, guy told me this is 23,000 pounds. Sounds like everybody in Utah has been called on it. We got the call, we're gonna go in, we're gonna get it. We're gonna figure out what we need to do and get them back on flat ground. Boy, you guys got quite a situation it's going here. Road. Pulling up to a job like this, there's so many factors to consider. This thing dry is rated at 23,000 pounds. That is in there. We were driving in this whole section of the road. It just, just collapsed under the weight of the car. Wow, that's a very heavy vehicle. Yes, it is. Looking at this, I'm trying to figure out, is this something we can do safely? Is this something that we can do with the equipment we have? A very important thing when you're doing stuff like this is checking the load limits. So basket, 26,000. So we're gonna basket it around this as a tree saver. Like realistically, the tree is not gonna hold that much weight. So you've gotta spread the load. The biggest thing is hooking at the base of the tree. You want it right where it goes into the ground. Now that's going straight down to that, right? Mike? Yeah, right to the rear bumper. Perfect. Okay. Oh, you want me to go get that hitch mount receiver in there? Um, yes, please. Okay. Not the spices and the chicken around here, but from McDonald's. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, you're in slow mo. See, you're the one doing it. Now the entire footage got screwed up, and it was entirely filmed in slow motion. We've done this before. <laughs> Justin did an amazing job fixing it, 
might not be the best quality, but we had to work with what we had. Oh, well, it's coming. She's gonna fit. Look at that. Direct. Perfect. Right to it. <laughs> All right, so what are we building up here? Nothing good. So now this right here, the customer's winch was gonna be, it was the one set up to pull in the best position. So I'm rigging up the straps to make extensions, but being mindful of the weight rating. So that was the biggest thing. That's why I doubled the straps up because I knew it was gonna be pulling the most. Every piece of equipment has a purpose. You have to use it properly. All right. Now we're moving glue in to where the winch line terminates so that we can line it all up with that tree that we're gonna redirect off of. This thing is always just amazingly slightly too long. Well, I was thinking about running up and anchoring it back to the tree we're pulling off of and putting a snatch block here. But that would, wouldn't that make it half as strong? No, because you're pulling. Uh, you're pulling that. If we unhook there, ran a short strap out to a pulley and then ran that end back up to the tree that we're hooked to. Okay. Then we'd have our doubled force there on that end. Now we're rigging up, we're trying to figure out where to put trail mater. This point is redundancy, having extras so that if something fails, we have a backup. That's it right there. He's a mighty fine rock. When you know that the vehicle you're pulling outweighs the vehicle you're pulling with, anytime you can anchor, it's the whole reason for the truck having multiple winches That's good. to help anchor itself. I think we're going to want a hard shackle there. We're mounted to an actual tow point. It's a solid connection. Those two pieces are not going to fail before the winch line does. So there's no way for that to go flying. Okay. It seems okay. We are not loading any winch lines as of yet. So all we're doing is just getting lines tight, not putting any load on them. Hang on, let me check on this other one here. I see Mike. Mike found here that the line's running across there. Cause you can run it in a straight line, but as soon as you start tightening, it's gonna find where it wants to be. Seems okay so far. Okay, Sean, tighten yours up. Hold. Yeah, go ahead and tighten it up, Sean. Okay, go ahead and jump in. Hey, Rory, before you put them in there, there's uh, that winch line right there that's hooked to the big truck. It's sitting on two big rocks, like... Okay. Mike, how's that looking? Right there, yeah. Oof. Don't put your fingers on. No, no, right. it's freeing right. the rope. All right, you want to go out? Uh, yeah. Now right here, we damaged that winch line. We should have stopped. We should have re-rigged. We should have changed everything on the job. We didn't. I'm aware of that. I understand. Okay. Try that. I think that's as good as she's going to be. Okay, now that we have the vehicle stabilized, the customer get in. We've got Sean running one winch, I'm running two winches, Mike is running scout up top to make sure every all the rigging is good, so I had to have the customer in the vehicle. Sean, tighten up. Right foot in drive. Those 
earth roamers, they turn so sharp that at full turn, it's binding the front axle up. Yeah, I'm fine. Now, his winch line snapped. That was the one I was putting the most tension on. I was tightening mine up right as it snapped. And I did run towards the vehicle. I know you're not supposed to. I wanted to calm the customer down because he's new to all this and the worst thing we could have is if he panics and hits the gas. In Mike's video here where the strap flew up when the winch line broke, the strap flew up there but not violently. If we had used a kinetic rope and a winch line is rated less than a kinetic rope, so your winch line is going to be what fails and then it's going to send that rope flying because all that kinetic energy that's stored now has to go somewhere. That's why I hate seeing people use winches with kinetic ropes. It is very dangerous because the winch line will fail first. Where that winch line got damaged is where it broke. But we we're at least up on the road enough that it was fine. I used a re-threader and re-threaded the end of his winch line, threaded it back together and made a loop out of it and then ran it up and hooked it up. All right, there she is, that's ready. Okay. Good, good, hold up right there. Okay, hold on. I'm taking my winch line off because now it's moved far enough forward that it's touching the bank. We're using Sean to kind of hold the back of the vehicle. Come this way. Well, turn and back up. Okay, hold right there, turn all the way back. Right there. Right when it's work. Alright, start reeling it up. <laughs> nice and done. Good job, guys. Woo! Yes. Very good job. Alright. Alright. So it's back up on the road and it's out. Now, first off, are there different ways we could have done that? Yes, there was a few different. I totally forgot about the purple strap that probably could have got most of the distance over that. That was my bad, I overlooked that. Yeah, I think it was the, the rope coming through the dirt yeah. that did it. We tried to do it as safely as we could with what we had. You can look at a picture all day long and go, we're gonna need this and you have no idea until you get there. That yeah. thing should have over the side. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> I, I seen it, I was like, whoa. That was way less of a tripod than my buggy would have been to the <laughs> lame <-o>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't want to do the boom. If, if you guys noticed, I pulled all the winch out to do the bottom winch. And right as we got it, I remember that drum spins inside that winch line. We remembered it, we bypassed it, we went with a snatch block on the main <coughs> line, which kind of slowed things down, but snatch block there and snatch block on the other end, we were putting some pretty good, pretty good pull on that, and that goes back to the whole rigging thing. So we use everybody's stuff. We've got Yankum's ropes, our Yankum winch line, we've got Factor 55 thimbles, we've got, I've, I've got Go Rhino, Bow shackles. I've got JM rigging stuff. 
I use what works and every company makes good stuff. So there it is. There, there's my plug <laughs> and all the people <laughs> stuff that I use. <laughs> anyway, it's done. It's out. Um, that's a whole lot of heart racing. That's a whole lot of stress. We got to go check out a forest service truck and then we'll get out of here. So if that doesn't be part of the video, thanks for watching. <laughs> You guys say thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thanks for watching. What Rory said, and Mike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. What is this place, Mike? Sean, when you turn that camera off, can you slap Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Caneville. This is Caneville. They have a building. And now we are past Caneville. So, yeah, there it was. <laughs> oh. Flip it, twist it. Oh, oh. This is gonna max out my insurance plan if anything goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs>